Welcome to the League of Extraordinary Trainers. I am TJ Pokatech of the YouTube channel. And I'm Carter of the non Mythical. What are you guys doing in my house? Who are you people? What are you guys doing? You don't know. Since this is an 11 week week, we're only going to be covering two of the weeks this recap. Seven and eight to be exact. Yeah, so we decided to shorter the third recap rather than the fourth just because we wanted to mix it up a bit. And it was 100% not because there was a coach that was unable to finish his battle on time. Because, I mean that... Another phone call? They won't stop! <laughs> Who is it? This is TJ. Yes, this is TJ. No, you see, the whole reason that I'm doing it like this is because if we do it super conspicuously, then it's actually a better cover. Because then it looks like we're just being overly dramatic, and it's not like I'm outright saying that the whole reason you were late was because you were helping trying to stop a rebellion. Rapid fire recap, let's go. So Ruffy sacrifices Glyce for turn 1 to get the Stolter Rocks out, they alternate between KOs, there's a lot of predicting electric attacks, but eventually Sprawl swaps into a Grass Map, which is quite unfortunate. Zorora got quite a few KOs, Droppa comes out to slow it down, Ruffy makes some steps, some swaps to wear the Droppa down, and eventually Zorora comes in and picks up. Sweet, so in this match, so much push in Future Sight, and it looks like I forgot about it in one turn and swapped into Venusaur, which is a miss, unfortunate. The Stone Edge miss was never fun, and I at least get one kill with Electrovirus surviving in an EQ from Sand Slash and Lowland form, but Electron Rock ended up sleeping up. So, yeah. Yeah, so that happened. So in this match, we have Aegis Slash, and it actually survived up with the Clover Berries when Weavile tried to pursue it, and it ended up KOing Weavile with Iron Head. Really nice rapid spin block for Chandelure. High Dragon swapped into an overheat crit from Chandelure, which was interesting. Uh, double Dance from Aegis Slash brought the differential back, and Chandelure cleaned up. Yeah. So an unfortunate Fire Blast crit on the table was very yeah. unfortunate. Oof. Yeah. Mag Mortar survived a supersonic Sky Strike from Moltres and KOs it. Whirlpool traps for awesome for the KO, which is cool. Mag Mortar survived a T Bolt from Jolteon, then sweeps with five Fire Blasts and none of them missing. Yeah, not a single miss. Uh, Gyarados switches into an Intimidate, to Intimidate Drapion, but unfortunately Drapion critical hit Poison jabbed it, tried to get Gyarados out of it there, but it got killed by Cursu. Uh, Thunderous Revenge kills with a Bolt Switch, Ditto and Meloetta both get their Charge Beam boosts, but Meloetta is naturally bulkier, and Meloetta actually ends up surviving several hits even when under 25% health and leaves the land for that. So victory. Sweet. So, Stinky Webs and Rocks get set up, Garchomp swaps into an eruption from Full Health Heatran, which takes massive damage. Oh, yeah. Dredigan survives the Starmie's Ice Beam, and in turn, Starmie survives Dredigan's Outrage, so our Starmie ends up KOing it, and Heatran loses, uh, yeah, losing Heatran and Gavancho way back. Yeah, so no, that made it rough. So Rainicliff sets up a trick for Pangoro, Garchomp swaps into the knockoff and gets hurt really badly and ends up getting finished off by Pangoro because of trick room mechanics. Rainicliff takes out Borgas, but not before Borgas, Destiny Bonds and takes Rainicliff down with it. Final play on Dragon and Zagreb was really good, but unfortunately for is under a nightmare, ended up winning against Frosty. Yep, so Frost comes in with an aggressive start, takes down Kofagurgis and Clefable. Eco brings it back by taking down Tornadus, a super sky, sonic sky, sky strike, and then two hit KOing Drampa. Jolteon T Bolt paralyzes Scizor, but not before being KO'd. Aroma Tease and Latios had a showdown, and X and Girl revenges Mega Latios for the win. Yeah, a lot of moves that we just cannot pronounce today. Anyway, so turn one webs we get from the Galvanic Light. Survive Victims Blue Fair because Focus Sash Explodes takes out Triple Feeny because of a bunch of boom bursts, but not before Feeny defogs and webs away. There's a Mist Thunder from Big Team, which is super unfortunate. A lot of bulky steel types seeing each other fire moves. We're making her doctor get to outstrip anything because Star Star Cure. Yeah. yeah. So Manaphy outstrip Mellow out of Pure form. U turn crit does massive damage to Crocodile. Oh, yeah. Harris was getting confused and all out pummeling on Frothers, but Mike swapped in with Crocodile who gets KO'd instead. Politoed encore Amistar on a Shell Smash and KO'd Gengar on the swap. King Drift sweeps. Yeah, really beautiful Hydro Vortex at the end there. So here, turn one, not for the Mythical, tried to take down the Hydro Glyph except for a Slammer. Unfortunately, you turned out and Kragon took the hit instead and it really tanked it. We had a Calm Mind Recover set helping Latias get bulky and handle High Dragon. Slurpup had a chance of stopping Latias, but Belly Drummed instead and Latias KO'd it. After that, after Slurpup went down, it all went down. 
Hill. Private will take a Dragon Pulse for plus three special attack. Oh, no, no, yeah. normal Elias. Yeah, normal Elias. Yeah. Wait, yeah. was that half health? Yeah, bulky. Uh, so this was Kevin's debut. Howler didn't didn't know that Lando can't taunt, but cleverly used Imprison to prevent Stealth Rock from Skarmory. Unfortunately, Icicle Crush missed on Torterra, cost Howler his Levile after getting KO'd by Iron Head. Drops by but Jirachi quickly froze it with an ice punch immediately afterwards. And it was a close match, but Megaladius finished Lando off after a stone edge miss. With that out of the way, let's look at where that puts our team standings. Alright, before we move on to the overall standings, let's take a look at this quarter in particular. Yeah, so uh, these last two weeks were dominated by the Virginia Victinis and the Westbrook War Turtles, both of which made... they won both of their matches. With, uh, what was their differential? Plus, plus six? six? Yeah, plus Half. six. And the Columbus Wu also managed to win both of their matches with a slightly lower differential. Plus four. Yeah, so he got third. Anyway, it's kind of interesting that there were actually three 2-0 records and three 0-2 records, but none of the 2-0 records actually... What are, yeah, the, neither of them actually faced more than one of the 0-2 records, so it was kind of... Huh? Uh, what, I'm <laughs> what I'm attempting to say is that the battles were incredibly interesting this quarter with a lot of unpredictable results. Well, unpredictable for you. You know, for one that brags about supposedly having future sight, it sure is fun to look back at last quarter when you lost to it. So that leads us to the overall standings of the season at this point, which is what matters. Yeah. So, and it's quite fascinating, at least in our opinion. Yeah, overall, we've got the Vancouver Venom in third with a 5-3 record and a plus-8 differential. And the Virginia Victinis are in second place with a 6-2 record and a plus-12 differential. Yeah, so that leads us to... And the Hollywood Hallucci in first place with a 6-2 record and a plus-14 differential. What? This looks fun. What's kind of amazing is that two of those top teams are actually from the same division. But unfortunately for Howler, there can only be one division leader. And that leader right now is Frost. Yeah, it's kind of incredible when your winning record is so insanely good that even after losing two matches in a row, you're still the number one spot. Yeah, what is he at? Plus 20 differential? Something? Yeah. Or 18 or something. With, with that being said, the current title holders for the Ruby Division are the Virginia Vitinis, mm -hmm. while Crystal Palkia is currently holding the, win uh, the winning title for the Emerald Division. And I cannot speak today. <laughs> no, or, yeah. Uh, well, however, there's still three weeks left of the quarter, and honestly, almost anything can happen still. In fact, nearly every coach has at least one scenario for becoming division champion with the division size. Yeah, that is very true. Well, honestly, it looks like we covered everything, so uh, let's go ahead and spin that roulette wheel and determine this quarter's prize winners, and uh, let's just finish this thing off. Oh, cool! So our third place winner is going to go to... Ooh, this is exciting! The roulette wheel. Seriously? Someone's calling you now? Well, they closed my app, so I might as well oh, answer Hello? Were you seriously going to skip over me? What are you talking about? TJ said it's my turn to get interviewed this quarter. I, I'm just gonna be honest here, I 100% forgot about you, Howler. Hey, I wanna be a part of this interview too. Is he okay? He's fine, don't worry about it. Let's just get started. First question. So what do you like about being a member of this league? Well, well, first and foremost, the league, especially this season, is so competitive. There are so many people right around the 500 mark that are fighting for playoff spots. And then you got uh, uh, some coaches that are fighting for first round buys too. Like there's so many races all across the board. And um, just every battle, every battle against every opponent in the, in the league is, is a challenge. There are, there are no free wins necessarily. Um, and also, uh, I, really, I really like how uh, peaceful kind and how diverse the group of people are in the server, uh, how diverse the group of coaches are. Um, I, I think it I think it really promotes the uh, idea of just having fun in the league. Um, yeah, so I'm really thankful that everybody gets along well. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome for me. The whole point of it is just to have fun. So as long as everybody gets along, for all, sure. we, all we can do is have fun. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Second question. 
In your opinion, what makes this league different than of the others that you have been part of? Uh, well, for one, all the other leagues that I've been a part of have never finished a complete season. Uh, so that's going to be, that's, I, I'm very grateful that uh, this season of LET is going to see itself through to the uh, proper conclusion of 11 weeks plus playoffs. Um, I was hopeful that the second season of LET was was uh, going to see itself through, but 15 weeks is a little bit of a taller order for some, especially with 16 coaches. Uh, but other than that, um, I also really love the new tiering system uh, for LET this year, having uh, S tiers and S tier megas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's made for a more uh, balanced, uh, balanced draft and balanced final rosters as well. Um, and I think it's clear that there's no uh, advantage or disadvantage uh, given to teams that opt to go with an S tier or opt to go with no S tier like I did. Awesome. Cool. So third question, what type of battler do you consider yourself to be? Offensive, bulky offensive, defensive, balanced, stally, maybe? Well, uh, I tend to think of, or I want to think of myself as a, as a player who can adopt um, multiple different play styles, uh, but generally I will err on the side of uh, bulky offense plus, uh, plus gimmicks, a combination of those two. Uh, generally not too much of a fan of uh, setup because I find it hard to uh, foresee uh, openings uh, for setup moves because it's sometimes it can be hard to predict what uh, coverage moves certain mods on the other team will have. Um, I also think it's important to uh, understand your opponent's play styles and their tendencies because that impacts that the way that you prep for a match. Okay. And I think it's important to have uh, an element of surprise as well. Uh, bring something bring something random or unexpected that will uh, catch your opponent off guard, uh, such as a Z Sleep Powder Rosary that I brought in my Week 5 match, cool. or a uh, Ring Target Chandelure that I tricked onto a Drampa so I could hit it with a Ghost-type move and it would completely wall my Chandelure. Nice. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, sorry that TJ didn't clue me in about this. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, TJ is very forgetful of things. Cool, that interview went really well. Now let's wrap up this recap. Wait, where'd everything go? Our, uh, our budget didn't allow for us to stay there any longer. What are you talking about? Didn't you say... It's better at this point not to ask any questions. Uh, let's just finish the recap here. No white void? Uh, there we go. Good as new. Anyway, let's uh... move on to prizes. Alrighty then, let me pull out my app so we can spin the roulette wheel. This is exciting! Who's the third place winner? Third place goes to... Eco. Again? Well, at least it's a different prize this time. Yeah, he wins the kill leaders for third quarter, who happen to be Mimikyu, Latias, Mega Latias, Infernape, Chandelure, and Meloeta. That's a lot. Our second place prize goes to... EJ Pokatak. Oh. Oh, I guess two of my TCG Online coaches shall live to see another day. Uh, our first place winner for the third quarter is Platinum Howler. Congratulations, Howler! You get four more of my unopened booster packs. Yep, these ones right here. We're, Wait, we're in virtual space. How the heck did you get those? You don't exactly make it hard. It's fine. I got your wallet. Wait. How'd you what? How'd you get that? Give that back. 